Welcome or welcome back to Both Sides of the Barricade. This week we have a very special guest, Miss Silver Sphere, aka Sophie, and she's a singer-songwriter signed to RCA Records, and she just released her sophomore EP, All My Boyfriends, which is amazing, and you should go listen to it if you haven't already. She's been featured in Coupe de Maine magazine, ID Wants to Watch, Idolator, she's everywhere, and I'm sure she will be in even more places very soon because she's amazing and I'm sure one of the next big things. Thank so- you. Of course, yes. Would you like to say anything about yourself before we get started? Uh, wow, you just really hyped me up. That made me sound so sick. <laughs> um, I'm Silver Sphere or Sophie. Um, I'm a pop musician. I've been making music for a few years. Yeah, I just put out my second EP, first one on a major. And um, yeah, everyone can come visit my planet, the Silver Sphere, if they want mm-hmm. to party with me. Yes. <laughs> I'm a permanent resident. <laughs> okay, so um, how, how do we know each other? I mean, I found your music because Spotify recommended it to me, actually. And oh, okay. it was when, I think right before your first EP came out, and I was, like, obsessed with your first EP. I remember posting about it on my story. I was like, I love this. Like, But definitely through social media, we met. And I remember we tried to meet up at the 1975 one time. Yeah. But Boo. but well I'm sure we'll yeah. meet sometime soon so definitely sometime soon after uh, the quarantine ends yes for sure um so yeah I guess and I remember when I followed you I was like so obsessed because you also loved like Charlie and you would post about like yes. all the artists that I loved so I think that common interest like is what drew me to you also um, cool yeah I mean I hope you heard some of that in my music too because like mm-hmm. all of that stuff is a really big inspo to me yeah. No, I remember hearing like Can't Sleep In and I was like, oh my God, this is sick. Like I just loved like how it sounded. <laughs> so yeah, I definitely yeah. hear that influence and that's probably why I'm so into it because I love those artists myself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so how would you describe your relationship with your fans? Because I'm a fan, but you know, in general. I mean, it's great. It's very different um, when it's just through social media. Like I went up, I just went on my first tour like right before COVID hit. Um, And that was really crazy because it was like the first time that I actually got to be face to face with people who would either I met over social media because they liked my music or who had just been following me for a long time. Um, I'd always felt pretty connected to them, honestly, through social media. I feel like we have grown up in an age where you kind of feel like, you know, people, even if you've just met them through social media like us. Um, But yeah, it's great. I don't know. I feel so much support. I hope that I give them support. I get a lot of messages saying that my music helps them through things, which is like really great because I used to feel the same way about my favorite artists. Um, Yeah, and then going on tour was wild because getting to meet them face to face and like seeing how cool they are (laughs) as people, I was like, damn, I want these people, can I swear? Yes, yeah. Okay, (laughs) I want these people to be my friends. Like, um, And I feel like they are to some extent, like, I really feel like we have a little community going, especially because I have this world of the silver sphere that I invite everyone who listens to my music to come to, to feel free, to feel their emotions freely, to enjoy themselves, whatever it is. I feel like that's kind of connected me with them because I wholeheartedly believe that I go to the silver sphere to write the music and feel those emotions and all of that. So, um, yeah, I feel like that's a big part of it. It's just like I have, I've created this world where we can all kind of coexist and, and we're all on the same page. <laughs> that's amazing. Cause you know, there always is that like artist co- fan community, but I feel like you really like solidify it with like the silver sphere concept, um, which I think is really cool. Um, Thank you. So I guess we'll talk about your experience as a fan, like growing up being a fan of music, like how would you describe your relationship with artists and music when you were younger? I definitely got extremely emotionally connected to the music and the artists that I like loved. Um, going to shows was like probably like life-saving to me in some ways, you know, when you're young, you have like so many issues and problems. And I feel like shows and seeing my favorite artists was like totally my escape from all that. Um, I also felt like, um, yeah, I don't know how to describe it. I never really like had the opportunity to talk to any of the people, to any of the artists that I liked or was, you know, yeah. really connected to growing up because they were all like too big at that point to have that sort of a connection with them. But I really feel like, um, and I don't think it's just musicians that do this. I 
feel an emotional connection to certain music and I feel like it represents me and it is a part of my personality and all that. So I was always really emotionally invested in both the people making the music and the music. Yeah. Um, sometimes to a <laughs> pretty uh, crazy extent. Yeah, yeah, I no, definitely I can... had my moment on fan Twitter and all that, but. Yeah, no, I can definitely relate. <laughs> so yeah. Were you, so when you grew up, like what artists were you listening to? I mean, the 1975 was the first band that I really felt um, as like a teenager felt like really emotionally connected to. And like, I loved everything they put out. I followed them like super hard. Um, but throughout my life, I was definitely always emotionally connected to artists and music. Like I can think back to even like probably like 2006, 2007, when I was like six and seven, like being obsessed with the Jonas Brothers to the point where it's like, you know what I mean? Like only thing I listened to, thought I knew everything about them. Like, you know what I mean? All yeah. of that. Um, but I think like, as you get older, it becomes like less common for people to be like that, like emotionally invested in something, someone they don't know or something they don't know. Um, and I definitely continued that emotional investment throughout my teen years. And even now I feel like there's certain artists who I, their their art at least I rely on it for emotional support in some ways so it's always been a big part of my mental health and emotional journey to feel connected to the artist I listen to yeah I totally agree like oh I could have said it the same thing <laughs> yeah so how has that like affected you as an artist now like getting discovered and signed like how has that ha affected your um persona or your just I guess, perspective as an artist. Right. Um, the music making process, I don't think is affected by it because I've always known that I relate to music that feels really authentic to me and feels like the person was really just bearing their soul. So I don't really, t honestly, don't take the fans into mind or think, oh, what do they want to hear or whatever? Because I know that people are going to emotionally connect to something that's honest and raw and represents me and my real feelings. Um, but I think when it comes to shows and my social media presence and, you know, interacting with people, I definitely keep it in mind because I remember how much that mattered to me as a fan and still does to some extent. Um, yeah, I try to reply to everybody at least. So with if it's like now when I just put out an album, I have like hundreds of DMs, right? Mm -hmm. So I can't always do like a crazy long response, but I think even just like getting a thank you back is like really important so that they know that you appreciate it and they know that they're being heard and their love for you is being reciprocated it's really important to me to keep that in mind you know what I mean yeah for sure that was all like I remember being like younger and just getting a like like on a tweet was like yeah, yeah. so I totally understand yeah but it means a lot because it's like if you're putting that much of your heart and soul into an artist or into their work that's just as important as the artist putting out the work. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's a relationship. It's not one way in my opinion, at least. Exactly. It takes both people to create a successful artist. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And that's kind of like what I wanted to highlight with this project and show like how important the relationships are and how real, because when everyone I talk to, like I have personal like memories with every single person and it's just really, yeah. I think important to like highlight it and, you know, let the relationship grow because it helps the artist grow totally yeah so um how would you describe where you are now in your career because you released I yikes was an independent release correct uh it was released through a distribution company called human resources but technically yeah. independent yeah, yeah. Uh, but now you're on a label so how was yeah. what were the differences between the two releases and where do you see yourself now as an artist right I mean, the first release, I was doing everything. I was finding the person to make the website. I was, my friends were making the videos for like 300 bucks in their apartment, all of that. This was the first time where I've always had a really strong vision of what I wanted. This was the first time it didn't have to be compromised because of money or resources or whatever. So I feel like um, I've really kind of solidified the world that I want the silver sphere to be I've solidified the visuals that I want even just the kind of music I want I was able to work with producers who I wouldn't have been able to work with before who really like took the time and created the sound that I think like uh encompasses yeah. me and and my vision um 
so where am I now? I think I'm at a place where now that I've settled into that and I'm not in charge of <laughs> directing and filming the videos by myself and all that stuff. And I've had one little experience like fully just like um, understanding that now I can create the world I wanna create without any boundaries. Now it's a matter of like understanding basically this EP was me figuring that out and kind of being like whoa what is this and I think now I'm in a place where I'm going to be working on the next project I'm going to keep going with creating the world and now I'm it's I'm settled into it and it's a matter of figuring out the most effective way to use these resources for good and for my fans and for my project and all that with whatever I put out next yeah yeah I mean, I'm, your fans are, I'm sure, already excited about that, so. They are, and that makes me so happy. Like, I don't know what I would do if I didn't get support and excitement from them, because sometimes it's like, yeah, it's a little daunting to have to go in and make music, and, you know, is anyone going to like this, whatever, so getting messages, I can't wait to hear what you're going to put out next, is so, like, motivating. Oh, I love that, but that's, yeah. like, I, I, I love that, and how has, like, how has quarantine like changed that? Cause like Chloe, for example, she was talking about like writing sessions that she would do through zoom or like even producing over zoom. Um, and I just wanted to know like what your experiences have been and how you feel about like those changes. Do you like them, dislike them? Yeah. I mean, it was really hard at first because I'm used to, there's a bus outside my door. I'm used to, um, I'm used to being able to go into a, into a session with a person and work off each other and like you know make a full song in a day and say oh change this about the beat like and then they change it and then it kind of can morph there's definitely more it kind of puts you in a box when you have to work over zoom or something so at first I was like really struggling because I wanted to be making music and you know I just couldn't do it the normal way but I kind of found myself getting back into the way that I was writing before I had any of these resources and before I had a career which was just in my room with my guitar like the way that I started writing so that was really interesting because I hadn't done that in years honestly um and I got a lot of good stuff out of it probably songs that I wouldn't have gotten if I was in a room with a producer you know what I mean so I figured out a way to uh to do it which was great um and now it's getting a little easier for example I'm out in LA and obviously you have to get a COVID test and every both of you have to be <laughs> you know what I mean very safe isolating just seeing the producer but I'm getting back into that they're trying to they're figuring out ways to make it safe now which is great because um it's been months since I've done that and the project is out so now that's really all I have to focus on is making new music yeah no and that's nice that you've at least been able to visit LA now and get gotten in rooms with people because I'm sure that was like really liberating to actually be able to do that in months like for the first time in months yeah and to, and to finally, because I was writing all this stuff on my own at the beginning of quarantine, be able to take those songs that I wrote and that I'm really proud of and did by myself. Yeah. And create a sound around songs that I've already written with these producers that I know and love. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's been great. It's been fun. I've only been here a few days because I had to isolate test. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But yeah, yeah it's, it's really great. And you've been doing those like Zoom parties, like you've been doing a couple like DJ sessions and things. Has that helped to like feel like you've been at least seeing people and yeah. making music as a group? Yeah, God, I miss, I just miss partying with my friends. So that's a really fun way to do it. You know, also I get to include the people who listen to my music, which is fun because I've always wanted to party with them. So, so that's kind of a really positive thing is that I found a way to connect with those people and do what I love, which is dance to music, um, which I definitely would not have done if it was quarant if it wasn't quarantine. Yeah, yeah, that has been nice. I like the Zoom parties, but I I can't say I don't miss like in person concerts and things. You know, it's just yeah, I miss it a lot. Oh, and I just got to do my first tour, and then all this happened. I, I was so excited to keep keep it going. So many shows I had like plans to go to were getting canceled, and I just oh my god, I wanted to cry. I was supposed to go to like Coachella for the first time, and I was and it would have been oh, man. I was supposed to play Lollapalooza, which was going to be crazy. Because I was going to go to Lala too. I was like, like, I just wanted to like make this summer a festival summer because I didn't get yeah. as many last year. And now I'm just like, I missed another year. No words. Yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> but, okay. It'll all be back. And I, you know what? My positive mindset is that everyone is going to be so hyped to go to shows yeah, once we can absolutely. again, that the energy will just be impeccable. It'll yeah. be great cannot wait I hope it's not too like 
strict and regulated. I, you know, hope it's <laughs> better. But Standing six know. feet away from everyone. Yeah, exactly. So um, you know, I get pretty crushed in, in moshes. I, I, I wouldn't oh, mind being six feet away from everyone. Same. Oh my God. I, there have been plenty of shows where I've gotten out and just been like, like wheezing. And especially at like Lala, there's like just dust everywhere, like getting like caked into your lungs. And yeah. Stuff. So like, so for that, I guess it's better. But um, <laughs> so when things do like go back to normal, like how do you envision your career going? Like ideally, like you have any like short or long-term goals that you have for like collaborations or touring um, places you want to visit? things like that yeah well I mean this is one that I can kind of do now still is like I just really want to solidify my sound and like figure out what it is because my first two projects I'm not gonna lie I was just experimenting with different things that I liked and kind of meshing a bunch of different things together and I feel like it's probably going to take a sec um but eventually I want to put out an album that I feel like really solidifies the sound that I envision in my head um and then I want to tour with it I would love to play shows only played like two shows that where I wasn't opening yeah. for someone um don't get me wrong that was like so fun but I would love to do a world tour where I'm the headliner yeah. and just the idea of having all those people in one room I don't know if you feel that you probably do feel this when you go to shows it's such a community because everyone is there because they have this common love for the same yeah. piece of art um and the idea that I could connect with a bunch of people or bring all those people into one room and I think they're all awesome. Everyone that I've met who listens to my music is someone that I want to be friends with. Like that energy. I just want to feel that energy at my shows. So touring is a big one. Would love to play festivals. Hopefully Lollapalooza will happen next year. I hope. Cross. That would be great. <laughs> yeah. And collaborations. I want to work with everyone. Literally, I think that even if I don't like their music, I think you can get in a room with someone and if you guys collaborate, you're going to make something really cool, even if it doesn't make sense genre-wise or whatever. So just collaborating with anyone, honestly, who wants to collaborate is a goal of mine. That's awesome. I can totally see you like touring and having like just a very, you know, spacey rave theme going on like on yeah. or yeah, I just, I love like thinking about like stage designs for people and like what they'd have like I can totally me too I have some crazy ideas for when the time comes can't wait (laughs) that'll be Um, so fun so I have some fan questions for you yay Um, little fun bit uh the first one is who inspires you the most I assume they mean musically because there's another one about fashion but we'll talk about music first okay fun um musically honestly pc music in general not even specifically sonically. I mean, I do love PC music, but the idea that they created a genre within pop music that is so experimental and they don't follow the rules and all of that. Cause I really don't think I have one sonic inspiration. I love like, like so many different types of music, but I think PC and the concept of that is like really inspiring to me. Yeah. I definitely like I love like PC and hyper pop like it, I think it's the future of pop music for sure like I think people are just not ready to get on the train but when they are mm, it's gonna be <laughs> when they are it's gonna be crazy <laughs> for sure um and then what is your favorite song that you've written oh I get this one a lot and I think it changes honestly like I'm sure every time that I write a new song that I want to listen to over and over again that one is my new favorite um but I think my favorite song is one that's not out that's called moments that I recently wrote can't wait to hear we have to tease it now (laughs) okay yeah um so do you have a favorite song like on both of your EPs then oh yeah that's a good question um I think my favorite song on yikes it's probably probably can't sleep in because it was the first time that I felt like I really drove like the experimental energy or like I came up with like ideas that I was really proud of um obviously I love the whole thing or it wouldn't be out but that's one song where I remember being really proud that I had like pushed for experimental ideas and and I got the product that I wanted out of it yeah and the lyrics too I are like very raw and personal to me Mm-hmm. I think that's my favorite on Yikes as well. I love that one. Thank you. 
And then um, they won. All my boyfriends. That's a great question. I have to look at it. Sometimes I forget <laughs> what's on it. <laughs> um, let's see. What is on all my boyfriends? <laughs> Oh, I think that Ghost is my favorite because that was the first time that I really felt like a pop star. Like when I wrote that song, I was like, damn, this is like really pop. Yeah. And um, filming the video, like the first time I saw the video, I was like, it was the first time I saw myself like as a pop star. <laughs> the video is sick. Like I love that song. Um, I love you. I love Handle Me Too. That like single was so good. And Crowd. They're Thanks. all Yeah, I love it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'm like you should be very proud of it like it's so good <laughs> thank you so much I definitely am I mean it was I finished it so long ago that sometimes you like lose the excitement yeah. about it mm-hmm. like before when it's about to get released and all that but I feel like as soon as it got released and I saw the reactions from all my fans I like immediately was just as excited as I was when I first wrote it yeah because one thing I've learned like I, I mean I go to school for music business so like when I'm hearing you know rollout planning and things like that like it's crazy to me like how old the songs are by the time they're released yeah because I just never thought about it like that but I mean it makes right. sense now and I'm just like oh my god like I can't even imagine like making a song a year or two prior and then it, it like takes that long to come out so but I'm sure yeah. seeing the reactions definitely like rejuvenates your excitement about it which is totally cool. I mean I also wrote it in the midst of this like crazy experience I was having with love which now I am not fully over it definitely affected yeah. me forever but I can I wrote the whole thing in the middle of that and so to watch it come out two years later it's almost like a little time capsule of this thing that I'm now reliving in a certain way. Yeah I love that too like I feel like and I think fans see it like that too like when they listen to something you know it kind of takes you back to a certain time in your life Um, for sure like when I was a Tumblr kid in like 2012 2013 like those albums take me back to that so yeah (laughs) um, I'm sure that'll be I'm sure all my boyfriends will be that for some people too which I think so sweet thank Um, you so someone asked what your favorite Taylor Swift song is and I have some questions about other artists that you have favorites right first (laughs) oh that is like tough whenever anyone asks me that I'm like there's too many I could probably pick I could probably pick one from every album yeah but like um definitely not one favorite Taylor Swift song yeah. one that let me think what have I been listening to most recently I've been listening to 1989 a lot mm-hmm. um usually I go between red and 1989 pretty frequently yeah. you know I'll dip back into Taylor and fearless and all that but hmm this love I think is my current favorite Taylor Swift song a good one like I think my favorite like Taylor albums definitely like 1989 and Red of course but I also love Reputation a lot yeah Reputation has a lot of bops on it I honestly didn't love it when it came out but there is a lot to appreciate on that album yeah and I liked Folklore too like Epiphany is like one of the prettiest songs I've ever heard so, of it. it's so good Invisible String is my favorite on Folklore for sure so pretty um but Thank I have to know little. I have to know what your favorite Charlie song is Oh, okay that's so tough too um I would say the Charlie song that I associate with the strongest memory is Backseat but I have so many favorite Charlie songs it's like too hard to pick but I, I, I definitely have whenever I hear Backseat I have this one specific memory of the first time I heard it I was on the train in New York and I just started crying I was like this is gorgeous like this is everything I've ever wanted out of a song well, you, so, you have the pop two tattoo, right? I do. I have a tattoo. So iconic. I can't so, really see it because it's under my little mesh thing, but yeah. but I love it so much. I I think that was like the moment I was like, "This is a queen. She's got the pop two tattoo." Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone thinks I'm crazy for that one, but I don't regret it one little bit. No, you shouldn't. And then, well, I didn't know that, like, I mean, I knew you liked the 1975 because we were at the same show, but do you have, a? Yeah. I mean, they have so many songs, like, so that I can't, I can't tell you to pick yeah. one, but if you have a favorite. Here, I can split this one into two. I can split it up to nostalgia, favorite song for nostalgia, and favorite song recently. Okay, perfect. Favorite song recently, yeah, I know, I think yeah. is so beautiful. Yeah. And favorite song nostalgia-wise is menswear. They have so many classics. Like I can't even. So many. Yeah. <laughs> that one's really hard to pick. Um, 
and then describe the person or people who inspired the songs on All My Boyfriends, which I thought was an interesting question. Okay, it is mostly about one person, although obviously I pull inspiration from different places. It's not completely a diary entry where everything is, you know, exactly truth, but for the most part, it's about one person. Um, Life-changing, heartbreaking, and beautiful. Aw, those are good ones. (laughs) I was expecting, like, he was an indie boy, like... (laughs) (laughs) Um, but I really like that. Yeah. He will, I mean, yeah, fuck boy too, but I'm going to go with the nice ones. Yeah. <laughs> and then who are your biggest style inspirations? This is the last one. Devin, Devin Carlson, for sure. I am obsessed with Devin She's Lee Carlson. my favorite. I'm obsessed with Devin Lee Carlson. She's my style icon forever. Same. Oh my God. I'm so glad you said that <laughs> because I am literally like I want to be her friend so bad like I just want me to like please just give me the clothes you don't want anymore. literally I like have notifications for her depop I'm like obsessed with everything and up. honestly like 20 2014 Haley Williams I will say I hope that's the right year yeah when she had the pink and the and the orange she's yeah. another one but Devin Lee Carlson is my like top tier style inspo I love her and Jesse too. Like I'm just like, please let me join. Let's have a throuple. Like I know, yeah, <laughs> oh, they're great. My parents. So I, have, <laughs> I have some questions that I thought. Of. Okay, great. Um, but quick, so- like I have one, but it's not part of it. But like, what was it like working with like you worked with Umru on like yeah. the ringtone remix for 100 Gex, right? Yeah. What was that like? Because that just that was great. Song. Yeah. Um. Well, it actually is really funny how that came up. Um. I was originally on, this is a fun fact, I was originally on the Charlie Rico Cara Cara Bonito version. It just didn't end up working out. Um, but the how, the way that the Umru one happened was he had a school project where he had, he had to make an like a acoustic or like live instrument version of an electronic song. Yeah. So, and he wanted me to sing on it. So I went over to help him with the school project and then he just ended up using the vocals mm-hmm. from that project for his remix. Yeah. Well, oh my God. Now that you say that and I'm like thinking about like the vocals, I'm like, wait, yeah, that actually would have been so sick. <laughs> yeah. I love it on the remix. Like, and I just thought that was so crazy. Like when you said that was you, I was, I, and I would listen to it. I'm like, I can hear it. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that was really fun that he uh, included me on that. Yeah. Um. So my other questions, do you ever write songs that might not be about something you actually went through? If so, what? And if not, do you think your songs need to have that personal authenticity to be something that you right well the only song I can think of that I didn't write about a specific situation was glow um which is kind of sad because it's like the only happy love song I've ever written but I wouldn't say that it it's not emotionally connected because I was writing that song like kind of to detail what my ideal love story would be like so it's not like I wanted to write about something that I felt separate from but um that's the only one that I didn't write about a specific situation or a specific person but it was more about like a reflection on myself and like what I would want out of love yeah (laughs) and I do feel like you need to have some sort of emotional connection at least for me I mean there's so many good artists who don't need that and can just write beautiful stories for example folklore is like mostly storytelling um but I feel more connected to music when that I've written when it's written about a situation or I'm using it to get out my emotions or feelings or thoughts. And I like that you do write it because like, especially now, like being more into the industry, like I can see that like, and you can see like the credits of the songs, but like you can see that not everyone like writes their own lyrics. So I know that, you know, for a lot of people, it's really important that they're singing their own words and I'm for you too. Yeah, it's really important to me. I honestly feel like if I wasn't going to be an artist, I would be a songwriter because it really is kind of like my therapy. I mean, like I go to therapy. Yeah. Everyone should go to therapy. Side note. <laughs> but it really is like an emotional release for me. And I feel like even if I wasn't an artist or even if songwriting wasn't my career, I would probably still do it. Yeah. So I can't imagine taking songs from other people unless it were to be like, a smash that I really just wanted to sing you know what I mean yeah Yeah. like if you could get like an Ariana Grande well 
Victoria Monet <laughs> song. <laughs> I um, love it. Yeah. Do you have like favorite songwriters then? Are you like in that world at all? Not really. I don't know. I get a lot of songs sent to me just because I'm curious to see if there ever will be one that, you know, I love so much, but it's all from different people, different places, all that. Yeah. A lot of the songwriters I know are also just like singers, but they'll write for other people. So I didn't know if that. Yeah, totally. I mean, I do that as well. I do, I'm published. So I also write for other artists and stuff, which is fun. I'll look out for you in the song credits. (laughs) Yeah. Um, so I was personally like a huge music video watcher as a kid. Like I was obsessed with them. Um, but I wanted to know if there were any music videos that stick out in your mind from your childhood that you are inspired by now because your visuals are very like specific to yourself. Yeah, totally. Um, Robbers by the 1975 is one that I just like constantly went back to and like really, I romanticized a lot. Um, I'm trying to think further back than that. I love how Taylor Swift's videos are just so like unapologetically like romantic and movie like and all of that. Every single one. I think the mine video um, is one of my favorites because it's just so romantic and like so almost like sickeningly like yeah, yeah. cheesy and sappy um but I love that one. Oh, you I think ones yeah. yeah I do um yeah I mean there's a bunch but those are the two that stick out in my mind just the ones that I constantly go back to to watch yeah for nostalgia was, purposes same like when I was a kid I remember like the ones that stick out like the most to me are probably like toxic by with Brittany Oh, hell yeah. Okay, yeah. dope. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, I remember being really obsessed with like the E.T. video from Katy Perry, just because I loved like uh, special effects makeup a lot. See, and- I, my parents kind of sheltered me from like a lot of media and culture. So it was like, um, I wasn't like allowed to use YouTube till like pretty late, whatever. You know what I mean? Um, so I feel like I missed out on a lot of that, but I go back and I watch and I can definitely appreciate it all. Yeah that's crazy I didn't know that um yeah but yeah just I, like, I not like crazy but yeah because YouTube like it's a crazy place like I remember I think like a Maroon 5 video had like nudity and I was like whoa like yeah <laughs> I'm eight <laughs> but I know I think my parents were like so confused about the internet like they yeah. still aren't really like very technically technologically savvy I think that they were just like we don't understand this so we're just not gonna let you use it because we yeah. don't know what you're gonna find you know what I mean Did they inspire, like, your music taste at all? Like, when you were a kid, did they play music for you? Um, not really. They listened to show tunes a lot. My parents, like, it was kind of the same with music. They, like, didn't really like the radio all that. So I feel like I had, like, a late start with, like, figuring out what my taste was. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, to some extent, I'm sure show tunes, like, are in there influencing me a little bit, you know? I'm sure even in like visuals like it's definitely more like theatrical even just with your stage totally no that's so true yeah so speaking of stage you cut out a little bit oh did I say that again speaking of stage name is where I stage names um was that something you always wanted to do when you knew that you wanted to be an artist or um why did you want to use one I mean as soon as I started taking it seriously and like as soon as I had music that I wanted to put out I definitely knew I wanted to use a stage name because I was honestly pretty shy about my music. Like no one really got it that I like that I was into it. And I thought like it it kind of does protect you from feeling too um, vulnerable when you release something that is about you. And on top of that, I just had a bunch of artists that I loved who had stage names like um, Rain and the Diamonds, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. So at the time I was like, this is the vibe. Yeah, I love Marina. I feel like so many of the artists that I listened to were like Marina was the blueprint and yeah, was, but <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. like, yeah. And even Lana, like she had a stage. I, I always forget like how many people use a stage name. Um, yeah. yeah. Even like I, now that I'm thinking about it four I think of the guests I'm having on have stage names. That's so weird. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> think about it. Um, I just, I think I recognize yours the most because like Silver Sphere, you like have the Silver Sphere. Like it's just very much part it's of- It's very much part of a, part of a concept for sure. 
Um, and then last question. Um, I love that in a lot of your interviews, when I was reading them for this episode, you talk about um, the problems that like female and LGBTQ artists face in the music industry today. Yeah. Um, have you noticed similarities between being a fangirl and being a female artist in touch with what that's like? To be a yeah I mean you're just not respected as somebody with intelligence mm-hmm. to be frank like right. when you're a fangirl or when you love the 1975 so much and for me it fully was about the music you know there's these stereotypes that you just are obsessed with the boy or you know you have you don't have an actual taste in music or there's no possible way that you could you know be intelligently uh, analyzing a piece of art, you know what I mean? And it kind of translates into being a woman in music too. You're constantly having to prove that you're more than just like the face that's singing a song, like, you know, and even like when you're in sessions with certain people, which I hate to say, it, and luckily like as I get further in and I prove that I write my music and all this stuff, it is slowing down a little bit. Yeah. You're even proving yourself to the people that want to work with you constantly. Yeah. I'm sure. And fighting for your ideas and having to probably work twice as hard, if not harder than that, to prove that your business ideas are, you know, Mm -hmm. actually smart or all of that. So, yeah, I definitely I never actually connected that. It's kind of the same as being viewed as a fangirl a little bit. Yeah, because even like even me, like I'm obviously not an artist, but being on like the business side, like that's definitely true. I see a lot of times where men who might not be as qualified are getting like, you know, jobs or um, the power to do things that they really should not be getting. And so I definitely see that. Like I'll see, and you know, being not taken this seriously, it's definitely unfortunate. I mean, especially with, I mean, with production for me is another thing. Like a male artist who's my age at the same level as me, whatever, could probably convince their label to let them go off into the woods and make an album completely by themselves and whatever and all of this you know on the label's dime and for me it's like I have a hard time convincing them to let me put a little production on a song or you know what I mean it's just there's this level of like being respected as an artist and a creator of art that men get a lot easier yeah (laughs) no I agree with everything you're saying I'm like I'm glad that you know, you mentioned that a lot in like your interviews, because I think it is important to like spotlight artists who are women or LGBT or both. Like, it's just, it's so important to make sure that they're getting the same opportunities that men are getting because a lot of the time. Well, if they're given the same, I feel like if women and people in the LGBTQ community were given the same amount of respect as artists and the same trust and um, resources to create in their own way without, you know, all of the people intervening the same way men are allowed to create and just like create their art we would be making crazy shit but the truth is that you're not allowed to do that I have to get feedback on things before I can finish it I have to go into the session being told what I'm gonna kind of what I'm gonna be making that day that kind of thing which is something that I think if we just fight back on it enough and we make it clear that you know we're just as smart and intelligent and good at creating art as straight men are eventually hopefully the idea won't be too hard to swallow yeah no I agree Uh, we hopefully our generation (laughs) will be helped with that yeah I hope so yeah um so if you have any questions like for me either as like a fan or um someone who's on like the business side technically like I just go to school right um if you don't that's totally fine but if you have any off the top of your head now is the time to ask (laughs) I'm curious, um, this is, feel, you don't have to answer this. Uh, did you ever have a fan Twitter? Um, I had a fan Instagram. When okay. I, I think like in eighth grade or a freshman in high school, that was like when I really started standing Lana Del Rey and I had like Hell yeah. an Instagram for her. And uh, I remember it was that time because I saw her in 2014 when I was a freshman and I remember posting about it on there. So I know that it was around that time. So I definitely did that. And then my Twitter now is basically a stand Twitter. Like it definitely was when I first started. But um, now I kind of just casually tweet about music. I'm not like full in it, but I definitely was. We love it. Yeah, I met a ton of and then, um I'm curious because I definitely did this. Did you ever like camp out for bands or camp out to get barricade all that? 
<laughs> like almost every show I went to it was so bad like I've I only camped out overnight one time which was absolute hell for all involved yep. um yeah <laughs> so bad so cold horrible yeah but I always did the like get there early in the morning get in line really early thing yeah and it would be it, I would get sick from like going to multiple shows a week like in January I got, like the sacrifices that I made for it but I had to get barricade like there was a point where I was like if I'm going to a show like I'm getting barricade like there's no point yeah it's <laughs> just it's just so much more enjoyable especially I don't know how tall you are but I'm like five one so unless I was barricade three rows back was going to be I wasn't going to be able to see anything so it was kind of like barricade or nothing yeah wow yeah I'm five eight so like for me it was like oh if I put on you know my platform docks and walk, right you'll be fine <laughs> be fine but it, it, there's just something about being that close to the artist yeah it's really enticing and I'm like I have to Plus, I remember the first time that I saw Maddie Healy in person I was like oh my god like you're an actual human being yeah, yeah. <laughs> so crazy yeah no and my friends were also like bad influences because we'd all be like guys like we'll get there like right before doors we'll do it and then like the day before be like so um maybe we should camp and then we would get there yeah. it's like why it was just um, that like group mindset but it was always worth it to me like always I mean it's I feel like when you're young it's just like natural to give your full heart to everything you know what I mean everything you care about and just like love it fully and utterly and do whatever it takes to love it all the way yeah. which is my favorite thing about music me too uh, yeah do you have anything else you'd like to ask <laughs> I think that's it I was just curious about those two but no I'm definitely like I was all in I still am I think if shows came back like I would be back on the street waiting because especially because it's been so long but god I'm lucky now now I just uh I just call up my agent and I'm like can you get me in <laughs> oh my god that's honestly the best thing about being an artist is that it's like pretty easy to get into the shows you want to go yeah. to it's my favorite yeah. thing Especially, like that's definitely a perk for like working in the industry too like I'm yeah like oh perhaps I'll be able to get free tickets <laughs> yeah um but yeah and like being friends with artists it's like almost like you know you're viewing it as like oh my god like I'm getting like a guest listed like that's so exciting yeah you know, as a fan that was like crazy to me when I started getting like so fun because I like knew the person but yeah it's really exciting to be part of it now yeah. um so I guess now we'll talk about like current favorites um if you have a current favorite like song album or artist any mm. you, know, you can talk about whatever you want go ahead okay let me look at my um let me look at my apple music real quick I would say favorite album right now is 7g mm -hmm. AG cook yeah. the like 70 song album I but know. that I, is it's so good <laughs> um cover on that oh the cover yeah it's beautiful yeah it's wild I might want to get it tattooed I know that might be kind of complicated but it could be really cool yeah um my favorite song recently is Sweetener by Ariana Grande <laughs> yeah. I've just been listening to it so much Sweetener is like my favorite album from Ariana. It's an unpopular opinion, but I think it's my favorite album of hers. No, it's so good. I mean, I honestly have not even, I don't know if I've listened to the full album, but my friend Gabby put on Sweetener on my birthday trip and I had never heard it. And I was like, oh my God, this song is so good. <laughs> Just so happy and fun. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so favorite, that was favorite album, favorite song, favorite artist. Hmm. Young Thug. <laughs> <laughs> fuck it I've been listening to so much Young Thug I have to say it <laughs> oh my god yeah what did he just put I, he's is he on franchise with uh I don't know I've I just was downloading all his old albums is what oh. I've been listening to yeah I think he's on the new Travis song I could be wrong a lot of them sound similar to me <laughs> tell who's on well yes Young Thug okay yes I got it <laughs> <laughs> you got it but no I love like hip-hop and rap too like I feel like it's always like on the back burner but I'm always like have it in rotation so I totally yeah um I think my favorite song right now is the song like Pretty Girl Lie by Baby Queen if I don't know if you listen Ooh, to me I'm gonna add it yeah but I don't um she's like this British singer songwriter and she puts out music that I think you'd really like it's like DIY influenced pop and it's like Ooh. socially aware so good um and pretty cool is about like um I guess like uh how you like self-esteem and how you like view yourself 
with media kind of influencing that. So it's a really oh. good and I just added it. Oh, yay. <laughs> um, and then I think my favorite album right now is Blackpink's album. I've just been like listening to that this week because it just came out. Um, and then favorite artist is probably Baby Queen. So you should definitely check her out. Oh, uh, yeah, I totally will. Yeah. And then, yes, I think that's pretty much everything we can plug. Fun. Uh, if you guys have not streamed uh, Miss Silver Spears music yet, I don't know why you have not, but you should. <laughs> and she just released All My Boyfriends, her sophomore EP go listen to it and the rest of her discography her instagram is silver sphere silver dot sphere her twitter is at the silver sphere and her tiktok is at the silver sphere would you have anything else you'd like to plug that's all uh tiktok is my favorite one right now if you want to see me be a bit derpy <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you guys should go listen to her and with that being said, thank you for tuning into this episode of Both Sides of the Barricade. Uh, you can follow us on at Both Sides of the Barricade on Instagram, at BSOTB Pod, the acronym and then pod on Twitter. And you can subscribe on YouTube. My Instagram is JTaylorLDR. My Twitter is JTaylorLDR. And this episode is available on Spotify and iTunes. You can also watch it on YouTube. Please follow, subscribe, like, download, rate, comment, all of that. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Sophie, for being here and being on the thank podcast. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And it was so nice to get to know you because this is really our first time having a full conversation. Yeah, you too. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs>